Yes, it is mandatory. And in clause 9.2 in harmonized structure, it talks about the requirement of internal audits. Yes, it can be done either ways, internally by the organization, or it can be outsourced by an external organization, as long as the auditors are competent and there is no conflict of interest in the team. The internal auditors have to be competent to conduct the internal audits, and there is no specific requirement related to certifying them. However, it's a good practice to have certified internal auditors in the team. Yes, the guidelines of auditing management systems is ISO 19011. Responsibility of internal audits falls within the internal audit team delegated in the organization. Of course, the accountability of the overall management system is for the top management. If we look at PDCA cycle, Plan, Do, Check, Act, internal audit falls in C, which is check. And internal audit uh, has to be conducted at least once in a PDCA cycle. And the organization's PDCA cycle is the management system cycle that demonstrates continual improvement eventually. So it depends on the structure of the management system. Most organizations conduct internal audit once a year. The audit criteria is an important part of internal audit because the auditor will be looking at it and it will be the criteria that he'll be auditing against. The international standard is one of the elements that are part of the audit criteria. Regulations, legislative requirements can be part of the criteria. The organization's internal processes and procedures also can be the criteria and any additional uh, requirements that can be determined by the organization. We spoke about the criteria of the internal audit. Determining the scope of the internal audit is as important as the criteria. The organization has to determine the scope, whether if it's a single process or the overall organization or a specific location or more than one location. So it depends on the scope of the management system audit, the audit will be done. The outcome of the internal audit process are called findings. And for these findings, if they are adverse and they require action to address them, it is the responsibility of the auditee to do that. If the auditor determines the corrective actions for the points raised, that will be a conflict of interest. The internal audit is based on objective evidence. During the audit, the auditor will be asking for evidences uh, uh, from the auditees to demonstrate conformance to the requirements they are auditing against. If the auditee is not aware of these requirements and is not aware of the internal audit process, he will not be able to demonstrate the right evidence. There can be cases where the auditee would have the information, but they are not presented timely to the auditor and that would create an issue in the audit process. Auditing in general is based on sampling. The organization can decide how deep the internal audit can be. Usually, random sampling is used as a, as a methodology for auditing. But if the organization wants to go through a more in-depth process of looking at more samples and more details of the processes, they can choose to do so. Nowadays, as we all know, this becomes a necessity. It's not an option anymore. BSI offers a wide range of products in this domain. We have BSI Connect family that includes BSI Connect Plus and BSI Connect Customized that can help in this.